Welcome to our last update of 2015. Uh, Lynn is off doing some media, so she's not with us here uh, today, but um, Leah is going to cover some of the issues that uh, she has been working on. Um, for myself, I have been working with Disability Action and a number of groups and organisations, particularly about a report to file that I am the lead person taking forward on the UN Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disability. And I was glad to speak in the Parliament yesterday evening about finally, after all the campaigning from the groups and organisations, we have got a draft proposal for an Accessibility Act. Uh, this is good news, even though it has has been uh, long in common. I just can't imagine what it must be like for the 80 million people who have a disability trying to get access to things that we basically take for granted, like transport, ATM, banking, computers. And this act will put an obligation on governments and on the executive and others to legislate in a way that's going to ensure that there will be accessibility. Yesterday, the four MEPs voted in the chamber in a number of files with one of them. Um, has been on fracking. Um, people will know that we had a conference in Fermanagh and South Tyrone, Matt Gardley and I, uh, earlier um, last year, and we held that with Michelle Gildernu and others. And we intend to continue on to try to get fracking banned. So we voted against the report, as did over 200 other um, MEPs. Tomorrow I'm going to be chairing uh, a Palestinian delegation meeting. I intend to take a delegation to Palestine in early 2016. And we're dealing primarily tomorrow with the right to return for those six million refugees uh, who people, when they're talking about refugees, I think that the Palestinian refugees aren't being given the focus and the attention that we must remember that these refugees have been in Syria, they've been, uh, prior to that, they've been in Iraq, they're now in Lebanon, and they're all over the Middle East in search of, of some refuge. And yet, when they are trying to get some help and assistance, they are being literally thrown from political to post. So tomorrow one of the main issues we're dealing with is the right to return for Palestinian refugees. Too many other things to tell you and time will not permit me so I'm going to hand you over to Matt. Thank you Martina and happy Christmas to everybody. Um, there's, this is obviously a very busy Strasbourg because so much has been crammed into the last week um, of before Christmas but some of the issues that I've been working on include the ongoing work that we've been doing on TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership and other trade deals that are ongoing here. This week, um, in a very welcome move, the IFA, the Irish Farmers Organisation, despite all their own current difficulties, came out very strongly and expressed huge concerns about the Mercosur Agreement, which is the agreement with South America. And the IFA have quite rightly said that they have huge worries about what that could mean for Irish agriculture. To me, the next logical step for the IFA and all farming organisations is to join the thousands of organisations right across Europe who have already stated their opposition to the TTIP trade deal. And I would encourage the IFA and all others to become aware, first of all, of the potential implications of TTIP especially, but the overall European trade agenda, which is very much about putting corporate interests ahead of those of citizens and particularly those from vulnerable communities like our farming um, sector. Another issue that I've been working on this week because every time we come to Strasbourg there appears now to be another attempt by Parliament to interfere with the tax sovereignty of European countries. And this week we're debating the file on the common co um, consolidated corporate tax base. Now that might seem to many people like a good idea because at the heart of it is the need for transparency in terms of how corporations pay tax. But underwriting that entire document that's coming before us is the wish of this parliament to basically ensure that there's a harmonised taxation system right across the European Union. Now that to me spells very dangerous warnings particularly as we know already that when powers have been harmonised at the European level that is the smaller countries like Ireland that suffer and it's something that we in Sinn Féin have been to the forefront in ensuring that we, um, we fight against and we stand up for their interests as stipulated by the Irish people on so many occasions that they don't want to relinquish their tax sovereignty. Unfortunately there are a lot of parties in Ireland who claim to be defending the rights of member states to set their taxation rates but when it comes to key debates here in Parliament they're very quiet. It's something that we're not going to let them 
away with um, any, any longer. So we're going to keep working on that as well as other issues and we look forward to coming back here in 2016, a historic year for Ireland, for Sinn Féin and um, something that we hope to be able to play our part in ensuring that the legacy of the 1916 proclamation is realised in Ireland. Leah. Yeah. Gormagat Matt, Dave Ramas, a hard gael to this last edition of the Strasbourg programme before Christmas. Uh, a lot happening this week, really, in terms of fisheries. The quotas were being decided in the council in Brussels. Um, I think they came to conclusion, they were supposed to come to a conclusion on Tuesday night. I'm still waiting to hear the outcome of that. We did have a meeting with Minister Coveney's office last week where we urged him to take into consideration the huge constraints of the fishing industry. If these council cuts go ahead, which they are talking about, you're talking about 300 jobs being lost uh, and 12 million euros lost in the white fishing sector alone. They're talking about a 30% cut to, cut to cod um, and monkfish and haddock and right across the board really. We also asked him would it be possible to get a quota for bluefish tuna because we know there's a surplus of that. It's a very valuable fish but of course this was ignored as a lot of our other suggestions so really we have to wait and see what the outcome of that quota meeting is. We hope to God that it's going to uh, be in some way of benefit to the Irish fishing industry but I have my doubts as well. The other thing I was speaking on in the plenary this week was this thing called the European Progress Microfinance Report, which has to be welcomed. It is a report based on supporting um, small businesses, women, entrepreneurs, those who are most vulnerable and most marginalised and that need money to get themselves back into the workforce. It's a loan, I think, of up to about €25,000. However, unfortunately, good and all as it is, and good and all as it is in terms of focusing on the social enterprise economy, it's coming to an end in April 2016, so hopefully they'll put something else in place through the Social Innovation Programme to shore that up, because it was really a very, very good programme. We voted in favour of keeping that yesterday in the plenary. The other thing, I suppose, which is a huge issue, Disha Arfad Savala, is the flooding. We have all been raising this in the Parliament and the need to access the Solidarity Fund immediately and make it accessible to Ireland. It is not, however, a problem with Europe. It is more a problem with the Irish government and its failure to access the funds through the bureaucracy that is going. And also you have things like the Habitats Directive, which really, I suppose, puts a kibosh on people looking to drain, to do proper drainage and put in proper flood defence systems. Um, and we are highlighting this very much here because we know that farms and Houses and businesses have been absolutely devastated by this in places like Bandon and Limerick and Clare. Um, it's really horrendous and it's going to be an ongoing issue as we know. It's not as if this is a new thing, it's due to bad planning um, and it's due to the lack of foresight. And this government, when we hear and, uh, Kenny talking about climate change not being a priority for Ireland, when clearly it should be a priority when we see the destruction and the devastation of the recent storm Desmond. So this has to be addressed as a matter of urgency. And MEPs right across the board in Sinn Féin have been calling for the release of that Solidarity Fund. Um, August Marocco, finally, there was a statement issued recently that there was an end coming to the derogation of the Gaelge. This was quite misleading, although we welcome um, the statement that stated there would be incremental steps taken to increase the use of Gaelge in the institutes, we still don't know what that actually means. It doesn't mean that the derogation is coming to an end. So, beggaring and bruising, if you mad, so as Marni Dochke, Mesha Tach and Derigri Fez of Hedo, Agus Marshain, Tamisha, Etrawa, Mariskano, Aglech, or Derichurdish and Melo, Agus Nismo, Don Tanga Dukisha Usaid, Agus Laname Raglishin, Achin Mochitche, Don Shachtensha, Agus, indeed, I think that's it until January of next year. So, a hard Gael, Bunigi, Anna Hanabasanolik. Well, tomorrow uh, there will be a debate here in the Parliament uh, about a young Irish man who is in prison in Egypt, and that has been led by Lynn Boylan. She's been doing sterling work on that, and his sisters will be here uh, in the Parliament in Strasbourg. But from us all here, we want to wish you all a happy and a healthy Christmas and a revolutionary 2016. Till next time, slang of oil. <laughs>